All right, welcome to this episode of the podcast, High Performance Mindset and Success Habits as a Christian Businesswoman. That's the topic for this episode. And I want to introduce you to Amanda Moffitt. She is a strong Christian wife, mom, and passionate businesswoman. And this is so interesting. She's an ex-ballerina turned entrepreneur. She has a deep passion for teaching high-performing Christian businesswomen like you listening right now how to organize and scale your business. Her love for entrepreneurship started when she bought her first business, a dance studio, two months after her 18th birthday, okay? But wait, that's amazing, but there's more. She doubled her revenue in the first year and scaled her team from there. And as she grew her business, she identified a gap in the market for us, us Christian women, those serious about growing our businesses. And so... You know, it's interesting. And I think we still see that a little bit, Amanda. Sorry, this is part of the bio, but um, there's this gap where we have business coaching and education online that's either secular and worldly or Christian, but kind of surfacey and really ineffective. So Amanda followed her nudge that God placed on her heart and she started Pursuit, a global community and membership for high performing Christian businesswomen. And she has a podcast. It's called The Pursuit Podcast. And uh, wow, that is quite a bio. So let's say hello to Amanda. Hello, Judy. I'm so happy to be here with you and your amazing listeners. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So listen, let's let's go back to that story. And I have to ask, mm -hmm. um, I think for those listening, instead of watching you on our YouTube I want them to understand how old are you now and give us this backstory. Fill in a little bit of the details, if you would. Yes, yes, absolutely. So right now today, I am literally only 22 years old. So I'm younger than a lot of people expect. But I have to rewind a bit because I started, I feel like I started a lot of serious things much younger than is typical. Like, for example, as you said, I was a ballet dancer and in the ballet world and basically in all sports in general, or if you take something very seriously, like an instrument or something, and you decide, I'm going to go to the top with this, I want to be in the 1% globally, or, you know, whatever that is for you, you have to start pretty early on, and you have to get serious early on. So I was already doing like, online schooling and getting college education um, in high school still, um, as I was pursuing my ballet career, I was already traveling the world. I traveled for ballet the first time when I was literally only 12 years old. Mm. And I would go to summer programs for dance. And I danced in Spain and New York and Chicago and Seattle, so many places, Austria. And all of that happened before I was 17 years old. <laughs> and so you do a lot of when you do a lot of serious things very young, mm -hmm. I, I think I just I think it just comes with like the discipline you learn so early on when other people are, you know, doing normal, great things like sleepovers and <laughs> parties and whatever you're training, you're working out, you're studying extra so that you can train your craft even more. And so I, I, I think a lot of people are very shocked when they see or get to know that I am 22, mm -hmm. but it kind of helps me fill in the gaps of, you know, I started a lot of serious things very young. Um, and so I was a dance teacher, uh, 16 and 17 years old, and then was offered uh, my first business by my old boss when I was at the end of 17. Um, I bought it when I was 18, and then scaled it 19, 20, 21, 22, started a different company. So a lot can happen in a few years, um, when you're really disciplined, when you work hard, and when you have a vision that God gives you. It's just amazing. And I'm going to ask what some women out there might be asking. And mm -hmm. this doesn't mean that uh, it's not coming from a bad way. I really want to hear your heart on this. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel like you missed out on anything? You know, I honestly don't. And here, here's why I say this. I say this because my, I had amazing parents. I have amazing parents who prioritized my mental health and well-being the whole way the best that they could in a very competitive cutthroat industry um you know I was a young girl in the top top super cutthroat ballet industry it's very much like the modeling industry um 
<clears throat> especially the higher you climb, you know. Um, but I had extremely supportive parents who did their very best. I think they did a great job at helping me to still have that as, as wholesome of a childhood as I could along the way as I worked hard. And the thing is, you know, and I think a lot of people who are like really dial into one specific thing and decide they're going to they're going to go all in and be super successful, like like the people you see in the Olympics and stuff, yeah. they really love it more than anything else in life they it's such a passion that when you're in the middle of it it, you genuinely don't even want to go to the pool party that you're missing you you're not even sad that you're missing the sleepover every once in a while like you're human you know of course but you have a passion that your other friends in school your age just don't have and that's okay um but because you love it so much it's actually not so hard to sacrifice for it um and as soon as you start to really struggle with sacrificing for long-term success that's when I I I would say um to take a a reflection and a little deep dive on you know is this the nudge that God's putting on my heart um am I willing to sacrifice short-term enjoyment for long-term fulfillment and success you have to kind of figure that out for yourself but you know, of course, every now and then it was a little sad, but definitely overall, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything for the world. And it was a choice I made um, with Love discipline. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know it's funny. These words, serious minded, disciplined, competitive, mm-hmm. passionate, committed, decided. I mean, these are entrepreneurial words and it is so yes. the analogy between, um, you know, an athlete, or mm-hmm. someone that's like you said, very committed to their craft, whatever it may be. It's exactly what entrepreneurship takes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not yes. the easy button from Staples. It's you mm-hmm. can make it simpler, but there's mm-hmm. hard work and sacrifice, and you have to be willing to do scary things. So I mm-hmm. love that. Okay, so let's talk about you owning this dance studio and how you manage that and building the team. I I would, before Mm -hmm. we get into the meat of the, you know, the mindset and the habits, I do want the listeners to understand if they've never seen that in the back end, what that really takes. Yes. Oh my goodness. When I wrap it up in a nice little bow and tell my story, it sounds so seamless and so nice. But I mean, when you go behind the scenes with an entrepreneur of what did it actually look like day to day to walk through every single struggle and failure and every tear, you know, there's Mm -hmm. so much that goes into having a successful team. And I scaled my revenue and all of these great one-liners, you know, honestly, it was so much trial and error. I had to fire. I had to hire. I did it all the wrong way at least once. And then I figured it out and I tweaked and I changed there are, there are things that I remember doing in my first year or just ways that I thought about business and marketing in my first year that absolutely blow my mind now today that I ever thought those would work or that they were good. And at the time though, it was what I knew and it was the best idea I could come up with. But you, when you're committed to learning something and when you go all in and when you say, okay, God, I am going to take this seriously. I want to learn and grow with you. And I want to bless and serve my clients the best I can. Please help me along the way because I don't know what I'm doing. He is so faithful and he's, he's truly so good. And so honestly, it was so much hardship and so many tears and I failed so many times and I know I'm not done, but you have to keep going. And that's like the bottom line of a high performing Christian entrepreneur is you cannot give up. You just cannot. And you see it all the time everywhere. You know, it's a nice, you know, headline and all this stuff. So many podcast episodes on it and books written about it, but you just can't give up. You just can't. It's the one thing you can never, ever, ever do. Um, And that's honestly, that's all it is. It's failure after failure. And then you you find something that works and then you tweak things and then you keep going and you do that over and over and over forever. (laughs) 
So what would you say to the person out there that says, yeah, I hear this all the time. I just Mm got to keep going. And yeah, you say you fail, but can you give them like one example of like a huge, like, aha, one of your first maybe ahas as a student? Yeah. Yes. A a super random one comes to mind right away. In my first year of business, I was running um, like a little promo and because I didn't have systems yet, Uh, When I wanted to send out this email for this sale, I was doing it manually right then and there rather than having like all of my sequence automated and ready to send out. Like I said, did not have systems yet. And so I had forgotten again because I didn't have systems. I forgot to send the sale promo email for that day. And so it was, I think it was literally like 1030 PM already. And I thought, oh no, well, if I just send it now, because it's an email, you know, it won't bother anyone. They'll just see it in the morning and it's great, you know, whatever. And so I send this promo email at literally past 10 PM. And the next morning I wake up to the most terrible email ever. Just this woman was so upset with me that I would send an email past normal working hours, you know? And I mean, yes, the way she spoke, the way she wrote, could it be called a bit of an overreaction or unproportional to what happened? Yes, sure. But also, should I have emailed during regular daytime hours? Yeah, probably, you know. But she wrote, you know, all capital letters. It's the type of exclamation marks where, like, she just held down on the exclamation mark, you know. And it wrote a lot. And I remember just this sinking feeling of, oh, my goodness, I never in a million years would I have thought that I would have made a client so unhappy by just sending a little promo reminder, you know, Mm -hmm. and immediate lesson learned. I will schedule these out ahead of time and I will only communicate during working hours. And, you know, that's a little example of uh, oopsies. I won't do that again, you know, but there are hundreds of those. Yeah, I bet. And, you know, to anyone, if you're listening to this show right now, and you never got a nasty mail like that from something. <laughs> and we never want to upset anyone, whatever the circumstance mm-hmm. happens to be. It could be an email, it could be a DM or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have a decision to make. Like, like, just, I wanted to have this coaching moment for the listeners that yeah, when that happens, that really didn't have anything to do with Amanda. Mm-hmm. She just happened to interrupt that person's circumstance who she wasn't having a good night. Either she had just fallen asleep and she didn't like being aw- awakened or she was having just a bad day and she took it out on there. So if anyone here happened to, you know, cause God is so good and his timing is perfect. I bet there's going to be more than one woman that's going to be listening to this and said, oh, that just happened today. And it destroyed my day. Don't let it apologize mm-hmm. as he did. But a lot of times people's reaction, it's really not about yeah. you. So I just had to drop that. All right, let's get into the meat of this thing. So high performance mindset. Let's even talk Mm -hmm. about that phrase high performance because some listeners might think, oh, I thought that applied only to like athletes. You mean me Mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur? So let's let's unpack that a little bit. Yeah, oh my goodness, of course. And you know, one of my first thoughts is when you say, you know, some people do think that's just for professional athletes and things like that. Well, I I can't remember the study off the top of my head, but I've heard it so many times being said that entrepreneurs and CEOs specifically have some of the highest rates for depression Mm. and anxiety and high cortisol levels just through the roofs. It's, It's a very difficult job. It's a very difficult position. And in order to scale and do really well, like your listeners, and like my audience as well, I, I know that's something that you all want. You need to have strength mentally. You need to have so much strength mentally. So it's so important. And I actually have 10, I have a framework of basically 10 things, like a little checklist of what does high performance mean? Sometimes it feels so vague and kind of elusive, but you know, like, what is it though? Like, give me the meat, give me the tangible, you know, if you want, we can go through those 10. Yeah, well, let's go ahead. Let's do it. So number one is high performers bounce back quickly and they recover really fast. Mm -hmm. All right. Number two, they know and work in their strengths and they hire others where they are weak. Mm -hmm. Number three, they have a mindset of 
orchestrating rather than doing. And we can talk about that one a little bit more. It's, oh, it's I awesome. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Number four, they are very clear communicators. Number five, they are highly effective at sharing their vision with others and getting them to see the vision too. You need your team to buy into the vision and want it for themselves. Number six, they don't gossip about others. Instead, they stay in their own lane and don't focus on the competition. Being aware of competition is very different than being focused on it. Mm-hmm. Number seven, they are very comfortable with being uncomfortable and they get com- uh, and they allow themselves to get uncomfortable with change. Mm-hmm. Number eight, they are highly committed to personal development and the growth of their own leadership skills and abilities. Mm-hmm. Number nine, they are very strategic with and proactive of their time and calendar space. And number 10, the final one, they are willing to fail and make mistakes often knowing that they will always get back up again. Mm. I can basically guarantee that if you show me anyone who has reached like very, very high levels of success in whatever field, sports, academics, you know, medicine, business, whatever it is, they have most of these qualities, if not all of them. And they value these qualities and will teach them too. Yeah, I love that list. That mm-hmm. is, that is, uh, ladies, listen back, go back and listen, mm-hmm. and write them down and say, yes. okay, where am I lacking? Or, mm-hmm. you know, because you're right. I suspect that everybody listening now says, oh, if they ever doubted they were a high performance person, now they see it or that's what they want to be. This high performance mindset and the high performance characteristics like mm-hmm. that is an entrepreneur. We are naturally mm-hmm. risk takers and we mm-hmm. want to excel at everything we do. Mm-hmm. I've never met one that wasn't like that. We want to serve to the uttermost, but we also want to excel. So that mm-hmm. list is golden. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So so those are like the characteristics or the mindset mm-hmm. and approaches to things. Um let's let's unpack some of those. Like that third one landed, the um Katie Bremont, they, right? They um, orchestrate they know, rather than yeah, do. They know, yes, they know their own strength mm-hmm. and they delegate or hire others for their weaknesses. Let's talk about that. Yes. Oh my goodness. If you are a woman who truly wants to scale and you are serious about not just maybe doubling your revenue, but you want legitimate scale of triple, quadruple, 10, 100x. You need a high performing team of other leaders. And we can talk about that too, who aren't just yes men who do things, but they take initiative and they act and they know your vision, your mission, and they are bought into it. And so as a high performing Christian CEO, you need to understand what gifts God has given you and what gifts God has given other people because it is the most beautiful thing in the world that you are not good at every single thing. That would put so much pressure on you actually to be the one and wear all of the hats, which millions of entrepreneurs do, which is just, I want to just take them all and say, no, like, please, please, please delegate, grow your team ASAP. It will change your life. You want to attract a players that are ready to not just be somebody who writes an email and hits send for you, but somebody who says, oh, hey, I had an idea for the email inbox and I came up with this system to make it more efficient when we do X, Y, Z. Can I show you a few of the frameworks that I came up with? Mm -hmm. That is the kind of employee you want, not just send this when I tell you to, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, really good. So Mm -hmm. I don't want to go too far down this, but this is so good. So team members that are leaders, they have the initiative, they ask questions, they're thoughtful. Mm-hmm. Um, last thing I want to say on this is where, where do you suggest mm-hmm. that our listeners seek them out? Yeah, a few, few things. Uh, first of all, a lot of people don't think of this one, but your own audience is a lot of times a great place to look for um a a position that you're hiring it's a great place to reach out to first maybe before you spend money on putting ads out there or you know paying for platforms and things like that because you never know especially if it's um something like you need a virtual assistant or 
something smaller or more specific like that, you never know. A woman out there who has followed you for a few years might be the perfect fit because they know you, they know your content, they know what you're all about, what you sell. They already are bought into your vision and mission in a lot of ways because they've followed you and they like your stuff and they engage with you. And I know entrepreneurs who have found incredible employees from asking their audience first. You never know who's out there. Um, another thing is, you know, places like Indeed.com and things like that, <clears throat> excuse me, they can be great. They can link people together that would have never found each other, you know. But one of the things that I tell my students and my audience, when you want to attract A players, you need to put yourself out there and your hiring process needs to look like a player material. Meaning if you put out there a document that's just a plain white document with black uh, writing that says, we're looking for an office manager who answers emails, picks up the phone and schedules on the calendar. That right there, that job description is not going to attract incredible leaders who are looking for a company where they can really plug themselves into and grow with and be inspired by and serve others with that right there, just not going to do it. You need yeah. to put yourself forward with quality, energy, inspiration, excitement. That's what attracts the types of people that will be your leaders and will help you actually grow and not just be yes men. Yes. I love that. And I never had to post for indeed. I always <laughs> mm -hmm that way and mm -hmm. I just brought on one team member and she turned us on to this amazing other person that just joined the team so mm -hmm. yes your audience is gold yes. for a thousand different reasons <laughs> yes yes yeah and just networking you know asking other people in your niche you never know who that one right person is you just don't know mm -hmm. that's for sure let's talk about leadership I can't believe how mm -hmm. fast the time's going too fast but let's talk yeah. about leadership as a CEO and the mm -hmm. habits of, and how do you, how do you foster and fuel and grow your leadership? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So something I like to kind of picture is this picture of a lighthouse. Okay. So imagine this in your head, a lighthouse sits alone. Okay. There's not multiple lighthouses always together. A lighthouse is alone. It shines a very bright light. It shines it consistently and it brings the boats to the safe harbor. That to me is what the picture of a true leader is because that light is also serving the boats that it is attracting. It is helping them get to a safe shore, a safe harbor. And so when you look at yourself in a practical situation of, you know, well, that's a great metaphor, Amanda, but how do I, how, how do I show that and embody that when I'm in a meeting with a client that, you know, really frustrated me, or we're not seeing eye to eye or something. So there's some issue with a client, you know, mm -hmm. it's the ability to, as the CEO, take a step back and to truly think about the situation from a place where your ego is not getting in the way, your pride is not getting in the way, to respond and not react, to respond with a calm strength with peace, with grace, um, always with strength, but with a kind and loving, gentle strength. Um, strength and harshness are very different things. And, and a true leader is able to just be that lighthouse. They are consistent. They shine no matter what people are coming at them with. And they just show up and they do their job with a calm strength. And so that, that's kind of the picture I like to see of, you know, how do I do this in real life? Yeah, I really, I really love that picture. I'm going to note mm -hmm. that definitely in the, uh, in the show notes, because it's like, what mm -hmm. does a lighthouse have to do with leadership? Everything. Right. right. That yes. Analogy. That is so good. Everything. Is, so what, as we wrap up, before we get into this amazing freebie that you're kind enough to offer our audience, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. What habits should our listeners employ to get to the next level? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the things that I teach practically to um, 
basically do everything we've talked about better in your life is number one, always, 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 obviously keep God as your priority and as your shining light, as your lighthouse. Because as soon as you get your priorities mixed up, as soon as you put your family above your faith, as soon as you put your business above your family, things start to go crazy. And we don't want chaos. We want peace and unity and joy and really healthy businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So keeping God as your number one, and it sounds cliche, but honestly, if you don't have that, you don't have anything. And then keeping your family as your number two. If God and family are not above your business, things will go awry and you will find yourself unfulfilled, burnt out, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So what I do practically as I'm a wife and a mom, I have two under two and an amazing husband and I'm building these businesses. So practically when I look at my calendar and I say, okay, how am I going to do all of this really well and be a strong leader for my team and my clients and be a loving, supportive wife, and so such a good nurturer and caregiver for my two sweet children, I first schedule um, my faith into my life because I'm a busy CEO. I need to schedule these things. So I schedule my faith, my Bible reading. I schedule my workouts. I schedule my children's things, my husband, our family events first. After all of that is taken care of, then I see where can I plug my business into my life? If you start doing it the other way around, if you plan all your business stuff and then you say, oh, but my child has that doctor's appointment and my husband and I have that event to go to, you'll find yourself starting to resent your business because it's taking away from your true loves, which your faith, your family, the things that are important to you, you know? So something just so practical that you can start today is, you know, do I actually live out what I say I prioritize. If you say you are a strong Christian who wants to put your faith first, do you actually though, you know, do you actually in your day to day on your calendar, if you say that you you prioritize family above money and business, do you actually, or do you push them aside to really scale the numbers and try to hustle your way to the top of your business? So I would say to keep those priorities in line, not just in your head, but truly out on paper on your calendar as well. Love that. Love that. Okay. Wow. Uh, unfortunately, we have to leave it there, <laughs> at least for now. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but <laughs> I understand you have this six pillar business checklist that you're mm-hmm. making available. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. Okay. So I love this checklist. Okay. It's going to give you so much clarity for your business so that you can move forward with so much uh, strategy to scale. So I teach a six pillar framework, which is leadership, team, profit, offer, marketing, and operations. And basically the overview is if you are pretty solid in all six of these areas in your business, Mm -hmm. you don't have to be an expert in each field, but if you have a general understanding and confidence in each area and you know what's going on in your business in each area, then you have a pretty smooth, well-oiled machine that you're running. But as soon as you start to focus on one or two of those areas and let the others go, that's when you start to feel overwhelmed, stressed, the numbers aren't there, you have employee problems, you know, all all of it, right? So what this six pillar business checklist is, is it's actually, I think it's like 13 pages long, this freebie I made. So it's not like just a one page checklist. There's a lot in there. But it will help you to evaluate and show you where you are right now so that you can make better decisions moving forward. And I take you through like a little deep dive of each pillar, the leadership, team, profit, offer, marketing, operations. And you get to look at your own business compared to what I show you in the freebie and basically see how am I doing? Am I great in marketing? But oh my goodness, my team, I need to really work on stuff. Or is your offer just stellar and your offer suite is incredible, but profit and numbers scare you and you've avoided them. You know, it shows you where you're at so that you can strategize moving forward. So it's, it's a pretty cool resource if I do say so myself. (laughs) Yes. It sounds amazing. We will of course have the link in the show notes Mm -hmm. and I'm just amazed at the maturity you have at your age. Um, so I do have one last question. Like, where did you get this business acumen? Was any of your parents, were either of your parents entrepreneurs? I'm curious. 
Um, my parents are not entrepreneurs, actually. My, my mom was an international flight attendant. My dad was um, an airline pilot. Um, and they also were in real estate a little bit. Um, they're very entrepreneurial, though. I guess you could say that they are in a way they own some rental properties and and have um, built their wealth that way. But I, they're very free thinkers. My parents are very outside of the box type people, which I love about them. And they imparted into me that free thinker, do things differently than other people. If everyone is going one way, why? And I think you should go the other way, you know? And oh, so yes. <laughs> they are, the, they were, I'm so blessed. They were the type of parents that when I said, you know, dad, I want to be a doctor one day. He said, okay, well, what, what about you opening your own practice? What if you ran the practice as a doctor, but you had many other um, staff underneath you? You could scale that way. You know, he always helped me think that way from literally as long as I could remember. So that helped me try to think outside of the box. And I've also just had, I've always had this hunger for going as far as I can and pushing myself in in a healthy, fun, joyful way, but really pushing myself to do the very, very best I could with anything I was given. My, like I was valedictorian um, graduating from high school while doing all this ballet stuff. And the reason for that was honestly, because my dad pushed me to say in the most healthy, awesome way, not not a bad pushing at all. But he said, you know, Amanda, everyone is at school the same amount of hours, okay? You have this amount of hours and you can do with that what you will. You can barely slide by. You can concentrate for half the day, but be lackadaisical the other half. Or you can go to school the same amount of hours as everyone else and you can work harder than anyone and achieve really cool things and have doors open for you. And I thought, wow, that's such a good mentality, you know? everyone has the same amount of hours and you get to choose how you apply yourself. And so um, working really hard became fun because I did it with the Lord and with support. I was really blessed with my family. And um, so just from there and just learning. So I read so many books. Well, I listen to so many audiobooks <laughs> yeah, and so many podcasts and it's like the air I breathe. So there's so, just always these gold nuggets, you know? Beautiful, beautiful. All right. So where is the best place for our listeners to kind of get plugged in and connect with you? Yes. I hang out on Instagram a lot at pursuit.company. So it's just at pursuit.company. And I'm over there every single day. I share a ton of free value on my Instagram. So if your listeners liked kind of what I talked about today in my teaching style, I'm always sharing really fun, um, hopefully practical and actionable uh, value over there. So I hang out on Instagram a lot. And I also have other free stuff for, um, for my audience over there too. Sounds great. Awesome. So, mm -hmm. and of course, listen to your podcast, right? So plug that if you would. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. The pursuit. Yeah. The pursuit podcast. I'm also a host there and it's so fun. I give you so many just like I said, hopefully really actionable things that you can take and implement right now to see results in your life and business. So I love the podcast. Yes. Isn't it so much fun? It anyway, is so fun. Listen, Amanda, I love you. This has been such a joy. And yes. I have no doubt that your parents are blown away by the daughter that they raised. I'm, I'm amazed at this beautiful young woman of the Lord sitting here with me. And it has been just a joy to feature you today. Oh, thank you, Judy. It has been such a blessing to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. All right, ladies, this wraps up another episode. If you haven't yet left a review, please do so. We just passed 200 reviews. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But look, I don't do it for the reviews. I do it to make your impact. So as I always say, after every episode, it's great. You've taken notes. You've listened. Now, what are you going to do with it? Okay. I bring on women to show you what's possible. And you know my mantra, pursue the impossible. So always keep in that, write down if you haven't yet, what is that impossible that I really, really feel a desire to achieve? And every day, chip away at that 
because with the Lord, nothing is impossible. So with mm -hmm. that, I will say goodbye and we will see you next time.